In this coding exercise, we have what appears to be a very simple problem, which is to simply return an array that lists out the full set of months in a year. And I'm going to show you two different ways that we can build this, but one of the prerequisites of this is to not simply create an array of months. We actually have to create something that can dynamically generate this for us. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the date library. And as you can see from our test, we expect a set of months. So I'm going to say def months to create a method that is going to return months. And now this is expected to return an array. And part of the reason why I picked this exercise out is I had a gentleman, someone who watches these, who recommended in one of the earlier videos I did a each block and he sent in a pull request saying it would have been better with an enumerable method and and he was right so I want to uh, build something that kind of replicates that and so instead of just using each we're going to use an enumerable method that's actually going to return a collection and if that part isn't very clear let me kind of walk through what the process was so I did something like created an array and then uh, you know, went over some other collection and said dot each do and then I piped into that array whatever the value of the other collection was. And that definitely is one way of doing it. Our test passed and everything worked. However, there is another even more efficient way of doing it and that's what I wanted to create this coding exercise to do, which is to use an enumerable method so we don't have to create an array, pipe things into it. We can actually do it all in one shot. So that's one part of it. We're also going to create a date range. So the way that we can do that is I'm going to, by using the date library, I can say date new, and we can say 2017, 01, and that's going to represent the, uh, January. Now from there, what I can do is I can say dot dot and date dot new 2017, 12, and end out that range. So what this is essentially going to do is it's going to give us a range of dates. Now I'm going to show you in a little while how this range is not the most efficient way of doing it, but more than anything I want to show you one, that you can create a date range, which is pretty cool, and then also how you can iterate over it. And when we're all done, I'm going to show you a much more efficient way of doing it. So from here I'm going to say each with object and this each with object actually takes a, a, we can pass it an argument. So what we're going to do is pass it a empty array. And what this allows us to do is actually pipe in values without having to have first created our own array. So here I'm going to say the block variables are date. And then I'll say month array. Now this month array is directly correlated to this array that we're passing in for the each with object. So what we're going to be able to do is as we iterate, we can fill this array with our uh, set of dates. So what I can do here, let's end this. And so now all we have to do is pipe in to our month array using the shovel operator, the date, dot string for time and this is going to take in an argument of the percent b and what this is if you've never seen this before you can definitely look up the documentation string for time is a holdover from the c programming language and it allows us to essentially manipulate date objects and in this case what this is going to do is it's going to bring us back the name of the month so like so we can let's take an example here so let's say that I use this date object and we can come down here and actually run this. And so this is going to create a date if I run it. So right here, this creates a date object. Now you may notice this 
kind of is kind of weird. This doesn't actually look like a date, and that's because it is a date object. It has a lot more functionality than you know purely printing out a date. But you can see it has the object type, which is a date. Then it has 12-1-2017, and then has a bunch of other information. So what we can do is if we utilize this string for time method, so if I do string for time and then pass in the percent capital B, this is actually going to return the named month, which is exactly what we're looking for. So you can see that grabs December. So that, that's essentially what we're doing. So with each time that we go through this each with object iterator, we're gonna be piping in the name of the month into this month array. Now this isn't exactly everything we need, and I'll show you exactly why here shortly, but let's say that I'm also going to print out what our months look like. And there's a very clear reason, and you may have already guessed why this by itself won't work, but let's run it just so you can see. So if I run this, you may see something a little bit unexpected. It, our, our months array right here, definitely has the name of months, but not quite what we're looking for. Instead, what it's doing is it's actually going through every day of the entire year, and it's giving us our set of months for those arrays or for each one of those elements that's definitely not what we want so essentially we have we have an array with 365 elements so january would have 31 entries and february would have 28 or 29 depending on if it's a leap year that's not what we want but we can fix that pretty easily by coming to end and just saying dot unique and that's going to return the full set of array items. You can see now we have January all the way through December. And if I clear this, and let me open up a new window here and say RSpec January 31. If I run this, one example, zero failure. So that may seem like we have the right kind of functionality, but let me show you something that I think you'll like much better because this is a lot of work for a very limited amount of functionality. I mean, we're having to build an entire year worth of date objects just to get 12 items back. That's rarely the best way to do something, especially in Ruby when efficiency is the name of the game. So I'm gonna create another method here and it's gonna be called Smarter Months. And now if I come in here, what I can do is call the date library, but then there's a very special class inside of the date library called month names. And this is going to actually give us just the month names. And so if I come to smarter and or type in smarter months, hit save, and now if I run this, this is going to give me much a different output. So see how I didn't have to do anything such as iterating or doing anything like that. I was simply able to call date, month names, and it gives us almost what we need. Now, there's one little issue with this, and that is that when you call this, your first item is going to be nil. Part of the reason for this is the typical time when you would use this month names is inside of a form element. So say, imagine that you have a Rails form and you want to allow users to pick from the full set of months. By leveraging the month names, it gives you a nil value in the beginning so you can have the first select item as a blank item, which is usually what you want in a form. You don't want to pre-populate it with January that can lead to some people just accidentally hitting submit and not even picking the right item. So that's the purpose behind it, but there, in order to pass our test, we're gonna have to fix that. So if I clear this, all I have to do is I can use some parsing for the array and I can just say one dot dot 12. And now what this is going to do is it's going to skip that zeroth element and it's going to give us exactly what we need. Now, if I come down, you can see that Smarter Months now gives us the full set of items. And just to verify that we're not going crazy, let's come down and if I come here, I can change this to 
uh, in the test just to make sure that everything is working properly. I can change this to smarter months. And if I run our test now, you can see one example, zero failure. So this still passes the test. But as you can see, this is a much more efficient way of being able to write the months. Now, there are some benefits to doing the, uh, it this way. One would be if you need the date range to be dynamic. That is obviously one uh, reason why you'd need to do something like that. Also, if you actually need the days, say that you're building out a calendar or something like that, and you need the days, then this is going to be the approach you want. However, if you only want the month names, using the month names module is going to be a much more efficient way of doing it. The whole purpose of this exercise was not as much to be able to print out the full set of month names. As you can see, that is something that's pretty easy, uh, assuming you know where to go look in the Ruby documentation. The purpose of this was to be able to accomplish a few things. First is understanding how you can work with date objects and that you can even pass in date objects as a range. So whenever you need to get a full range starting from one date and going to another, then you can do that in Ruby. Then also talking about how we can use enumerable methods like each with object so that we can be more efficient when we need to take one collection and then essentially map it to another collection and to be able to essentially do it in place like this as opposed to doing something like creating a separate array and then piping values into it. This is considered a little bit more of a best practice. So having knowledge on how to use the, uh, the methods like each with object along with the date objects is definitely a good skill to have in your Ruby repertoire. So good job if you went through that. You should now know not only how to create a month generator, but also how to work with date ranges and the each with object enumerable method.